potentially stand to benefit uh, on any ban on Huawei equipment. Are you seeing any additional interest yet from clients concerned about Huawei? Thank you, Neera. So, uh, you know, on this whole situation of uh, security with regard to certain vendors, we're watching the situation closely, we're observing. Of course, this is for governments to decide. We will be there for our customers when they need us, and we certainly know how to help with multiple you know, technological alternatives to solve the issue at hand. When Are you getting us. more interest from those customers, though, who might be concerned around the issue of Huawei? Yes, we are. We are getting uh, more interest. There are concerns. Uh, there are also, you know, some uncertainties, and uh, we just watch the situation closely. In terms of the uncertainties, is there a risk that telecoms operators delay investment decisions around 5G because of uncertainty over which equipment makers may be off limits to them? I don't think so. I think, uh, I know that discussions happen in Europe. I mean, US is moving along. We've uh, done lots of rollout of 5G kit in the US. Korea is moving along. Japan comes next. China, parts of Europe, Nordics, Australia and uh, the Middle Eastern countries. So clearly, we're moving fast. I mean, we have got 22 commercial real 5G contracts in place now as Nokia, and we've got some 100 trials and pilots and MOUs. Now, the issue in Europe is it will not be down to you know, the absence of a particular vendor. If there are any delays, it'll be down to allocation of spectrum not being on time, or regulation, or in fact, the fact that consolidation has not been permitted in Europe and the business case gets a bit more challenged, but nothing to do with, I think, the lack of a particular vendor. Yes, understood. I know you already said a couple of days ago at this conference yeah. uh, that if there was a ban on Huawei or anyone else, it, that wouldn't be the reason uh, that Europe's 5G rollout would be stalled. But how will the market for telecom equipment, your market, be affected by the increasing security concerns around Chinese vendors? I mean, security is just going to become a non-negotiable cast iron item, right? So it's, because remember that 5G is going to be used for both consumer broadband, consumer IoT, but also industrial automation and enterprise digitization. So of course, vertical companies and enterprises want to have secure solutions. And when they piggyback on operator networks, they want it to be on secure framework as well. So the importance will be just, you know, massively more as we move forward. Yeah, exactly. And on that security then around 5G networks, is post-development lab testing enough to ensure the security of those networks? Post-development lab testing uh, with governments taking a role there, uh, you know, I'm afraid that's not the best solution for testing these things. We are in a world of continuous software delivery. You know, uh, software moves all the time. So that's one thing we will uh, help when lab certification needs to take place, but uh, it's, uh, at the end of the day, not going to be a complete solution to if that, the issue. If that's not the best or complete solution, what is? I mean, there are multiple alternatives that our customer operators have and vertical companies have as you want to deploy private wireless and private 5G. Multiple vendors, uh, but also many technological alternatives, such as using open interfaces or uh, standalone architecture and 5G, if you happen to have a vendor in 4G that is potentially going to be banned, there are multiple alternatives for you to, to uh, solve that issue. Now, you've got a great setup here at MWC Very Barcelona. Exciting. You're really uh, showing everyone at the conference uh, how connected cities, connected consumers, connected industries could work through 5G. When will new 5G use cases like industrial Internet of Things and connected vehicles have a meaningful impact on your earnings? Well, they're starting to have an impact now because remember that we have number one 5G. We are the only company on this planet that has an end-to-end -end portfolio that covers everything a telecom operator needs and operates in every market of the world. We're also the only company that can do so also in the enterprise space because, as I said, whether it is LTE 4G or 5G, there is a great opportunity for enterprises to use this to digitize themselves to get massive efficiency and productivity and so on.